by uh, Lawrence. Please, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is uh, Lawrence. Let me uh, get my notes. Okay. Oh, well, it's nice to see all of you again. Um, many familiar faces, many happy memories. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, my sharing is not going to be very long. I've got a script. So. <laughs> I just hope they don't crash. Okay, um, this is my second trip to X. Um, it's different because you're more experienced, there's no novelty factor. Right? You don't go in with rose tinted glasses. And um, a lot of people say that you go in doing, you're going for the feel good factor, right? You're going to do good. But it's different because this time around when we went to Kampong School, I saw the medical students wearing N95 masks. I said, oh dear, something's happening. And um, they said there's active TV ward behind. I said, okay, active TV, the wind will blow, right? So it should be all right. So then we started seeing patients. I didn't wear my N95, very gung-ho, very clever. And then I ordered an X-ray for a patient with five-year cough. And uh, X-ray came back, it was all white. I said, it's Cambodia, what do you expect? And the kind of x-ray you get. So I told him to repeat the x-ray. Meanwhile, I peeped over at the next table, and his x-ray was clear. So I took out the two x-rays, I took a look and said that, my goodness, that is not a lousy x-ray. That is Millery TB. The person that we just saw, me and my translator, actually saw a patient as a super spreader of TB. So we said to ourselves, don't play a fool. You come here to do mission work. Don't go home sick, okay? So everybody N95, whoever doesn't have N95, please step outside. Okay. So there is um, there's something real when you go inside there and then you're going to do something at your own risk. Okay, there is some factor of danger. And if you remember the person who protected the Sydney massacre, she went in to protect the kids at the cost of her own life. So with doing this, not for fun and games, Yes, we all feel good, we all dance and all that. But the medical and dental team going there, we actually face quite a lot of risk. So I wrote a few things on Facebook that I'd like to share with you. Um, my son Isaac is there, and, uh, and I wrote a few things. I went with Isaac. So one of the things I wrote on Facebook is coming here, Phnom Penh, we went to uh, FFC, FCC, the Foreign Correspondents Club, Dora was there. So, coming here and having dinner with all familiar faces in the mission team made me feel home again. Somehow, all the paranoid kiasu thinking that we have in Singapore just stopped. And I feel whole again. Feel like things are back when I was happy and fulfilled. Confident to face each day without worrying about my own safety or reputation. I didn't know that there was going to be active TV. Either. If I knew, what Priscilla never said. <laughs> Somehow, there is a quiet sense of divine providence rendering superfluous my being confident that I'm doing the right thing in life. That somehow, the God who has and had never shown his face to me is somewhere, somehow, smiling to me, at me, in tacit approval of my being here in Cambodia with my son Isaac. As if it's like being Abraham, bring his son Isaac to worship, not at the Temple of Mormon, Mormon is money, yeah? that we have in Singapore, but at the feet of the poor of Cambodia. From washing out your wax in the children to doing surgical procedures in Pum Chure and Kampung Spu, we found great satisfaction in doing our little bit. As we all know this song, you know, I'm going to make the change for once in my life. Going to feel real good, going to make a difference, going to make it right. And when you're in Cambodia, somehow you feel that healing. You know, Cambodians, they went through a lot, right? 
if you've been to the Genocide Museum, <coughs> you see all the atrocities that are committed by themselves to their own people. Actually, it's not a genocide because it's not one race killing another race. It's an internal conflict. So healing does not consist of undoing damage, but in not letting the damage control your thoughts and actions. And I felt that I need this prayer as much as the Cambodians need it. So it was a prayer for myself and the Cambodian people. So I wrote in my Facebook, I'm going back to the basics, back to this first call to James and John, drop your nets and follow me. And somebody said this, we ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean. But the ocean will be less because of that missing drop. Mother Teresa, I'm sure you know. There was a child, actually there are many children there, with no shoes. Okay. So they're all running around the medical center in Kampung School. And I wrote this, life in Singapore here is unreal, where we are caught in the rat race. Our first world problems doubts me. Exorbitant healthcare costs, HDB flat prices, CONE ERPs, MRT woes. Again, I will back to the basics, back to the Lord in the first call of the James and John. Drop your nets and follow me. So I'm going to end with a quote. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer if you want to make the world a better place. Take a look at yourself and then make the change. Thank you. Thank you.